What we're going to take a look at here is using NashPy to do two things. One, simulate a Morin process, so simulate this random picking of, of uh, individuals to copy and individuals to remove. Um, and then also how to estimate, essentially using that simulation, estimate uh, fixation probabilities. So um, import our libraries, create a matrix A. This is in the Hawk Dove game, slightly different game. Going to create myself uh, a game. This is kind of the building block of everything we do in in NashPy, because uh, I've not given it a second matrix. Uh, it's telling me it's a zero sum game, but we don't need to know that. That's not necessary. Um, and at this point, we can go, all right, um, let me set my random number generator and let me um, build up my generations. You'll see there that I'm using NumPy's random number generation generator. That's because that's what NashPy is using underneath. So by setting a seed, it just ensures that this will be uh, uh, reproducible. Now, an important input to a Moran process is what is our initial population? And so in this case, we're saying our initial population, we have three individuals, because this is a vector with three uh, entries in it. An individual of the first type of the first, the first individual is an individual of the first type, so is the second, and the third individual is an individual of the third type. So note here that this isn't the count, which is what we do with the replicator dynamics when we use NashPy. This isn't the number of individuals of each type. This is the actual individual themselves, just represented by a number. Let me put generations there. And what we can then do is go for population in generations, print population, and we can see what's happened to our Moran process. We started with that initial population, and then over time, uh, the second individuals have, have taken over. And now if we were to uh, rerun this, but with a different random seed, and essentially a different random um, universe, and uh, take a look at um, the population. Again, of course, you could plot this. You could do various other things. I'm just looking at the underlying numbers. See, in this case, mutant entered, mutant survived one generation, and then mutant was kicked out. Um, it's also possible to uh, run these with uh, mutation. So I'm going to set my random seed again. And I'm going to set that I want a, a certain number of generations. So when we use mutation, the process isn't going to end. So I'm only going to say, let me have five generations. And I'm going to use an incredibly, uh, uh, well, not incredibly, but not the most uh, sensible uh, mutation probability. Just to be able to demonstrate, we're going to say that everyone essentially that is copied is randomly selected to be someone else. And at this sense, we go generations equals game dot moran process as before. The initial population is going to be 0, 0, 001. Let me space this out a bit better. And um, what we are having is a mutation probability to be this mutation probability I've, I've put in. Now, at this stage, we uh, can start going through this generator. So we can go um, for uh, dummy step in the number of generations. And now at each step, we're going to step through the generator. <clears throat> we're going to say print the next generation. That's simply because we the generator doesn't actually know how many things there are. Uh, print next generations. Let's see, in this case, we arrived at everyone being of the second type, but then there was mutation and the process continued on. So just be aware that here we're doing next generation to kind of force our way through the generator. Whereas when the population actually terminates, uh, the generations is just that generator of all the population. Um, final thing to, to know about uh, these, these modern processes, is that if our matrix A had um, negative values in them, uh, let me highlight that it's a uh, negative uh, value, um, uh, two, three, four. And if we tried to run this code, <clears throat> we could of course create the game. But if we attempted to do 
generations equals game dot moran process with some non some well irrelevant uh, um, uh, initial population the following would happen we get a value area error that tells us that only non-negative value payoff matrices are currently supported. So NashPy needs your matrix to be uh, non-negative. In other words, needed to really the entries of your matrix to represent fitness. So various things you can do, transformations you can make to, 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 to deal with that. The final thing I want to show is that if we have a sensible game, so I will take this matrix here, um, build up my game one more time. What we can do is get our fixation probabilities. Um, once again, with that same initial population of 0, 0, 001, and uh, with, let's say, repetitions equals 200. And what that returns is the probabilities in this particular population. So a population of two individuals of the first type, one of the second, the probability that the individuals of each type take over and so um there's a 74 percent chance that individuals of the first type resist and a 25 26 percent chance that the individual of the second type take over so that's using the fixation probabilities method